Welcome back to Southern RV TV. I'm your host, Barry, and today we're gonna do something a little different. We're not doing an RV tour. We're gonna do a little bit of a how-to because winter is coming and we want you to be able to winterize your RV to keep your plumbing safe and sound through the cold months. But before we do that, we need a base understanding of how the water system on an RV actually functions. So where does the water come in? Where does it go? And what happens to it after it goes down the drain? Let's start with where the water comes in. You have typically two connections on the outside of an RV, a city fill and a tank fill. If you hook your freshwater hose to the city fill, it will go straight to all of your faucets and taps. Now, if we hook it to tank fill, it's gonna fill up a freshwater tank that you have on board from which you can run a water pump to move that fresh water out of the tank and to those taps and faucets. All right, now some RVs have both in one place. In other words, the fresh water in comes into one location and there's a little valve that you can switch to switch between city water and tank water. Either way, that's how the fresh water is getting into your system. Once the fresh water's in your system and it hits those taps at say, let's say the sink or the shower, you're using that fresh water is going down the drain and at the sink or the shower, it's going into what's known as your gray tank. This is a holding tank that is designed to hold non-potable water, not sewage, but non-potable water. Now, the toilet is dumping directly into a black tank. The black tank is designed to hold sewage, all right? Once those fill up, that's when we have to dump our tanks and start the whole process over again. So that's a base of where your water's coming in and where it's going in the camper. Now let's talk about how to get all of that water out so that your tanks and your pipes don't freeze up and burst and also replacing it with a food grade antifreeze. Let's just jump right into that by demonstrating how it's done. So remember, our goal here is to empty all of the fresh water out of the RV. To get started, we wanna be in a nice level campsite. We wanna get our jacks down, electricity on, slides out. That way we can use all of the amenities on board both inside and out. We're gonna get started right here at the hot water heater. Across the board in our industry, your hot water heaters ultimately mostly look the same. It's the square box panel that we see right here. Sometimes it's on the patio side, sometimes it's on the off door side, but it has a little toggle lever that simply flips that we can open and pull the access panel off. Now, before we get going, we do wanna make sure that your hot water heater is turned off. This can be done a couple of ways on older models. Sometimes there's a switch inside, on most newer models though, this is gonna be done by flipping a toggle switch on your main control board just inside the entry door. Now, if that can't be found or you're just completely unsure, go to your breaker box and just flip off the water heater. That ultimately will kill all power to it, guaranteed. Now, we want the water to drain out, but remember this is a hot water heater, so if you have had the hot water heater on, you wanna be aware of that. You don't wanna burn and scald yourself with hot water. So it's best if it just got turned off to leave it off for a while to cool down. In our case, we're lucky we have not had it on, so we know the water inside is cool. The first thing we wanna do is release the pressure on board. There's a pressure release valve hiding right here. We simply flip this little guy up you can see the water starting to spill out now if this had a lot more pressure on it or it was warmer that's going to come out at a much higher rate of speed but now that the water stopped we know that the main pressure on board has been released from it the next thing we want is to get ourselves a one and one sixteenth inch socket if not you can use a wrench but a socket certainly makes this super easy and we're gonna remain, remove the main plug here. 
Now once I do this, water will come rushing out. There we go. And we can see that our anode rod, because this is a new camper, is in good shape. Sometimes this will look all pitted and gross and it needs to be replaced. This is what keeps the inside of your water heater from corroding. Now that the water's starting to drain out of this water heater, we want to clean it out. Let's get into that. To get the inside of our water heater clean, we have a couple of options. One, we sell a wand in our store that's specifically designed to attach to the end of a hose and go in through the drain on the water heater and rinse out the inside. For folks that don't have that wand, we can simply flood the system and let it drain out that low point of the water heater. To do that, we're gonna take our fresh water hose and I like to use a water pressure regulator because you never know what's coming out the other end of this. And we're going to hook it to our city tank fill. Now, some RVs have a separate city fill and a tank fill. And some RVs, like this one, have it combined in one with a valve that separates them. Specifically, we're going for city fill because that's going to bypass our freshwater tank. And in this case, all I have to do is flip this valve up and turn on the water and we're ready to start the rinsing process to get the sediment out of the hot water heater. Now, I do wanna mention inside, we wanna make sure that all of our faucets are closed so that we're not just cycling water through the system. Let's go get this water hose turned on and watch it from the other side to see that water heater purging. Now that all of the water has drained out of our hot water heater, we can move on to the next step, which is actually bypassing the water heater in the lines. We'll get to that in just a second, but I wanna show you a tip and little trick that I do. I take a little paper towel, bundle it up there, and shove it into the water heater drain instead of putting the plug in the ray tube back in, and thus, for two reasons. One, it's going to allow that tank to breathe a bit, but it's also going to keep the bugs and the creepy crawlies out. Let's go ahead and put our screen back on and let's head inside to talk about bypassing the hot water heater. All right. So knowing where your hot water heater is outside of the camper will help you locate it inside so that we can bypass it. Now, we found ours on the door side back in about the middle, which we traced it back to our kitchen here. And I've already taken the screws out of the access panels just to make this quicker for us to get into and see. Down in under our kitchen sink, we have the back side of our water heater. This is where the water heater bypass is going to happen in this particular model. Sometimes, though, there's actually a switch on your main control panel that will allow you to bypass the water heater without having to go through all this rigmarole. And also, occasionally on an older model, you may find that it does not have a water heater bypass built into the back of the water heater. That's okay, there's kits that we can install that are very easy to do at home on your own that can create that bypass moment for you. So what do we have back here? We have our cold water in and our hot water out with 90 degree valves. And if we turn them, we'll see that we go from feeding the tank to actually doing a loop straight through and back out. So instead of filling the tank, it's going to bypass it and go straight to the faucets. We don't want to fill the tank with antifreeze because it's a big empty tank and that's six gallons of wasted antifreeze. There's no reason for that. Remember, we left it open where it can air out. It should be fine through the winter sitting empty. And our end goal is to fill the pipes inside with that antifreeze. So a quick flip of the valves and then we're good to go. Now we need to head outside and drain the rest of the existing water out of the lines from our low point drain valves. Let's go check that out. So 
So for draining everything that's residual water in the system out of the camper, we're looking for three main drains on the underside of the camper. One is going to be for your freshwater tank. If you're lucky, it'll be one of the big inch and a quarter to inch and a half with a wastegate valve, and those drain super fast. But sometimes it's just a small 90 degree valve like this one here. We're gonna flip it, and that's gonna start draining off our freshwater tank. There's also a hot and a cold dump as well. Those on this camper are located on the opposite side, so let's pop over there and open it up. If your camper is anything like ours, you had to hunt a little bit to find the plumbing valves for the hot and the wa cold water plumbing to be released. Ours were tucked up in here under the fender skirt. Uh, same deal though, just a 90 degree turn, and that's gonna open both of those up, and it's gonna drain off all of our plumbing lines, and we're just gonna let that run out until it is done. Once this is completely emptied out, we can close everything back off and we can resume our winterization process. So now that all of the water has drained out from our low point drain valves, and we have nothing showing as dripping through the lines, we'll get into the whole pumping antifreeze through it. But I wanna talk about the blowout method because here in the South where we only get a few cold snaps a year and we don't really get deep freezes, this can be pretty handy. A lot of folks will just use a compressed air and an adapter. These are available in our accessory store in either a Schrader valve or a quick connect that runs up to this water hose size. And between these two, you can use that compressed air to push all of the water out of the line. Once all of the water is out of the line, you can add a little bit of antifreeze back to the P-traps and over the seal on the toilet just to keep that seal nice and fresh over the winter and consider it pretty much done. Now in deeper, colder weather climates, you definitely wanna pump antifreeze all the way through your lines, which is what we're about to do. But you don't necessarily have to use the blowout method to do that. We can use just the pump to push that antifreeze through. You'll see how that works in just a second. But we are gonna go ahead and blow out our lines just to make sure that it is completely through. We're gonna start by blowing out the tank. In this case, I don't have a tank and a city fill separate connection. Again, I do have that valve. So we're gonna make sure the valve is set to tank fill. I'm gonna screw in my quick connect. And then I'm gonna hook my air line to that quick connect. You can hear it pushing the air through. And then if I reach down, we'll see water sputtering out of our down drain line and you'll feel that air pushing through and you'll know that it's done. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the city line. We need to run inside and open up one of our faucets. Now that we've opened up an interior faucet, we wanna make sure that we're set to the city fill or we have our nipple attached to the city fill line. We'll reattach our air hose. Air's running through the line and we can go and make sure that each individual faucet is emptied at the hot and the cold. Now from there, once it's blown out completely, as we said earlier, we can add just a little bit of antifreeze to the P-traps and to the top of the toilet seal and call it good for those warmer weather climates. But for deeper freezing conditions and colder weather climates, we wanna run antifreeze through all of the lines Let's jump into how to do that now. So to start with getting antifreeze into our line, we need to first locate our water pump, which is gonna be on the back side of our docking station here. I've already gone ahead and unscrewed our panel to give us access to the line. And what we're looking for is this T line that comes off of our water pump here. Now this has 90 degree shutoffs and one of these lines heads down towards our freshwater tank and the other is just open ended. What we're doing in essence is changing these 90 degree valves to where we're no longer pulling 
water off of the fresh water tank with the pump. And instead, we're gonna pull our food grade alcohol based antifreeze. We like that because it doesn't leave any funky taste in the tank straight through the pump. That's what that does. So when we put this down in here and we have these valves turned the right way, now when we flip our water pump on, it's gonna start siphoning straight out of this bottle and into our plumbing lines. Let's head inside, open up one of the sinks and cut on the water pump. And then we're just gonna wait till it turns pink and we'll know that we've ran that all the way through the line. We'll repeat this process for every faucet in the house until we've opened everything up and everything's turned pink. Let's go do it. Now that we've ran antifreeze through all of our lines and gotten it through all of our fixtures, you might find yourself with just a little bit extra in the jug. You might have gone through a couple of these jugs depending on the size of your RV. The bigger the RV, the more antifreeze you're gonna need. But if you do find yourself with a little bit of extra, that's a good time to go back in and add it to the P-traps in both the main sink just to kind of fill that up a little bit and in your bathroom sink you want to put also a little bit over that toilet seal just to make sure it's covered and down in the p-trap of the shower as well last but not least we're going to want to step out and drain our black and gray tanks from any of the fresh water that we might have flushed down in there in the process once that's done you're ready for winter storage, you're set up and winterized. The only thing you might want to do is jump back in about once a month or so and make sure that you've definitely got some antifreeze sitting on top of that toilet seal so it doesn't dry out. Other than that, you should be good to go. If you like this video and you feel like you learned something, please hit the subscribe button. We're constantly putting out content. You can also check out all of our available RV inventory at southernrv.com. And until next time, y'all, as always, happy camping.